Let's do it. All right, we uh, have some interesting scriptures to go over today. Um, before I get into it, I just really highly recommend you check out um, The Last Dispensation uh, YouTube channel, Troy Abel's Last Dispensation. He's put out some awesome, awesome videos the last few he's done, and I, I highly recommend him. Now, I don't know whether he'll like me saying that or not. <laughs> uh, you know, because I say a few things here and there, but um, he's good, and I really like what he has to say. So that's just, uh, that's just a, a little shout out there for, for Troy. Uh, and... Um, I know you'll enjoy it, and, I, and there's some really good information there. So uh, yesterday, Sue and I were going through the Gospels, um, and basically starting from the chapters of the Last Supper right on through the end of each Gospel. And we didn't together get through to John. We just did the three. That took quite a while. It was really, really awesome ran across the scripture. I don't know why I've missed it or, you know, what, what the deal was. But this is in Luke. And we found that Luke really gave the most detail about the last days of, of Christ's earthly ministry. Um, and I have a few comments on it. And I know, uh, I will say this. If, if you're offended easily, um, by what the scriptures say, and, and it might not go along with the, the normal narrative, then um, you don't listen to this video. Just don't listen to it. Don't listen to the rest of it. You'll, you'll get all frustrated and you'll write comments and you'll, it'll, just, it'll just hurt you. Um, but if you're open to, to um, exploring a little bit what scriptures are, what, what's in there that we've I, I've never heard it really talked about. Um, and this is in Luke. We're in chapter 22, Luke 22. So this is, so I, you've been warned. <laughs> if, you, if, if, you're, if, if, if you're, you feel a little prickly about things and you don't want to hear something, a little different narrative than what you're used to, then skip, skip this video, the rest of the video. So we're, so we're, in, we're in Luke 22. And this is a really interesting conversation that the Lord has first with Peter and then, then general, the, the general uh, apostles that are there. Um, so I'll, I will start um, uh, in verse 31. I'll start in verse 31 of Luke 22, uh, because that's where the thought begins. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Okay, interesting. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. We've heard these scriptures. They're awesome. There's so much in that. I'm gonna just keep going. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. <laughs> So this is where this is where Peter maybe um, makes a little bit of a um, you, you know going out on a limb like hey I'm I'm your guy don't worry about me offending you okay and and I will always follow you everywhere and then Christ says to him and he said I tell thee Peter the cock shall not crow this day before thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. You know, and Peter's just said, I'll, I'll go to prison and, and unto death to follow you. Verse 35. Now this is where it gets really interesting and where I don't think we've heard these scriptures taught very well in the past. And he said unto them, when I, so unto them, so now this is general. So he's, he's done talking to Peter. He says, Peter, you're going to kind of hang yourself on these, you know, declaring how, how uh, d devout you are. And, and it's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Uh, you're going to deny me three times. So now I'm going to talk to the rest of you or, or all of you together. And, he, and so verse 35, and he said unto them, 
when I sent you without purse and scrip and shoes, lacked ye anything? And they said nothing. Now, you could say that they didn't say anything or they, they actually said, no, we lacked nothing. That's how I take it. We, we didn't lack anything. As long as we were with you, we, it just, you know, stuff just happened. We, 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 we got it. We, we had it as long as we were with you. Now, listen to this. You haven't heard this in, from the CES folks. Then said he unto them, but now... He that hath a purse, let him take it. And likewise his scrip. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garments and buy one. <laughs> now look, and I'll keep reading this. Now this is how I'm taking this. It's like as long as I'm with you as Jesus Christ the son of God, and I'm with you. You guys don't need to worry about all this, this stuff. It'll, it'll happen. But when I'm gone, you're gonna need to live and you're gonna need to have certain things. So verse 37, listen to this. For I say unto you, this is Jesus speaking to his apostles, that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors for the things concerning me have an end. Now, this is really interesting because as Christ is winding down his earthly ministry, he, he always points to prophecies being fulfilled. There's, there's several, there's several. Um, and he, they're Old Testament prophecies and some are recorded and some aren't. And, and this one that he will be among transgressor, transgressors is, it's in the Old Testament. And so Christ is, is, is giving them a, he's teaching them through the prophecies of the Old Testament, which is all they had at the time, um, about him and what's gonna happen to him. And they're fulfilled to the, you know, the 30 pieces of silver that, that Judas, the potter's field where he kills himself. The, the, so many things, the, 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 um, his, his garment that, um, that the Roman soldiers you know, haggle over, that's all prophesied to the very detail. So, so this is just a side note. I was listening to a, um, uh, something on the radio yesterday as I was driving to go visit my dad and, and uh, 93 years old, going strong. And it was a Christian station and a minister was on there and, and he was talking about end of days and I was like, hey, this is awesome. So I'm listening to it. And he said, he, he, he brought this up. He said, he said, isn't it interesting that the very details of Christ's earthly ministry are so specific? Why wouldn't the very details of his second coming be just as specific? So, so I've, heard, I've heard some in, in the LDS community, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saint YouTube community, that they'll say something like, well, the 144,000, that's just a metaphor. That's just a representation of leadership. It doesn't really mean that there's 12,000 from each of the tribes of Israel um, totaling 144,000. That, that, that's just a, um, a type or a title, okay? And I say that's bull. It, the very details... Just like this minister said, I agree with that. And I've always agreed with that. The very details of what we read in, in Ezekiel and in Daniel and in Revelation, in section 45, in, in uh, uh, 84, 88, 93 sections, uh, 133, and uh, Matthew 24 and 25, the, the things we read in there are very specific about the events leading up to Christ's second coming. And, and I, don't, I, I think they're just like the prophecies of, of his earthly ministry. They were very right down to the detail. So I kind of got off track a little bit on that. So, so I'm not one of those that say, oh, you know, this and that. This is just to, you know, kind of to give us an idea. No, no, the, the moon will turn to blood in the sense that it will look 
and it will be blood-like, a blood moon. You know, there, there's something about that that's literal. And, and, and Christ himself will be able to point at it and say, that's the fulfillment of that prophecy. Um, um, the, the, the sun will be blackened. Um, death, a third, you know, the, the, just these, these things, these section 29, <laughs> I forgot to mention that, where um, a lot of the come follow me CES just went, oh, you know, let's not really focus on that. Let's focus on the here and now because that's a distraction. And you know what? The Christ doesn't teach that. He teaches just the opposite. He says, watch, you watch those things. Okay, so that was the kind of side note. Let's get back to the, to the sword and, and Christ saying, um, you know, if you've got a purse, you better keep it. And if you have shoes and clothing, better hang on to it. And if you have a sword, sell your garment. If you don't have a sword, sell it and get one. And then, he, and then he talks about the transgressors. Okay, and that's where I got off track. Okay, verse 38. I mean, Luke 22, verse 38. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, it is enough. So they're like, well, there's 12 of us. Actually, yeah, there's still, yeah, there's still 12 of them at this point. Um, uh, And I, th I just had to look. I think, I think, yeah, there's still 12. Judas hasn't gone off yet, I don't think. Maybe he has. But anyway, they're going, well, we have two between the 12. And Christ goes, well, looking, this is just me saying this, right? My opinion. He's, he's probably looking at him. Like, These guys are, we're fishermen. Uh, they probably weren't very good with swords. But there's probably a couple of them that, that could, could handle a sword. So two is probably good enough for these these 12 guys, right? And the Lord said, behold, here are two swords. Or, or they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, it is enough. Now, this is interesting because shortly after that, Christ is going to the Garden of Gethsemane. And after, after he has his prayer and suffers, in the anticipation of what he's going to be doing on the cross, knowing what that's going to be like and the suffering that that, that entailed. Um, then come the soldiers, not the Roman soldiers, but the soldiers or the 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 guard of of Caiaphas and the priests and, and all those those guys. They come. And we, we don't find out until until the Gospel of John that it was actually Peter that cut the ear off with the sword. So we know Peter had one of the swords and, and then Christ healed that. And we find out in John that that was one of the very guys that approached Peter and said, hey, I recognize you. You're a follower of Jesus. And Peter, that was one of the times, I think it was the second time, Peter denied knowing Jesus. The very guy that, that got his ear healed by Jesus that Peter cut off. And we only hear that in one of the Gospels. I think it's John. So my point is, we, we, we always talk about, okay, so, so in, in one of the other Gospels, when, when, when a disciple, it says, cut off the ear of, of one of these guards, Christ said, you know, put your sword away. If you're going to live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. And then Christ says something interesting. He goes, look, I could call down a legion of angels to wipe these guys out, but that's not that's not what's going to happen here. I'm giving myself up freely, so you're it's okay. So Christ was still with them, so they didn't need the sword, but they would need the sword later on, and they would need food and raiment and all the things. Um, so it's no wonder that Christ said to him, "I'm going to meet you back in Galilee after this is all over." and I'm resurrected. I'll meet you back in Galilee. He says that several times. So the fact that they went to Galilee isn't, isn't a negative. And the fact that they went back, back fishing, in my opinion, isn't a negative. Um, I, I think we look at it like they just lost hope. And so, you know, we're just going to go back to, to fishing. Well, right here, these verses said you need these things, you know, the basics of life. But he also said a sword. So those of us that like to defend ourselves 
and have concealed weapon or have have the, the, the ability to protect our loved ones and people around us and want to be trained that way. This is our scripture. <laughs> this is the one we can go to. This is the one that we've been denied <laughs> uh, that we're supposed to just, you know, oh, let's just give it all up and let, let people take advantage of us and, and all that kind of stuff. No, that's not what the Savior was talking about. What he was talking about was this specific inc incident and, and situation where he had to allow himself to be taken, okay? He, he's like, guys, I don't need your help. I could, I could call a legion of angels to come and save me <laughs> and wipe these guys out, but I'm giving myself up. Okay, so so this is an interesting thing. Now, I know this isn't the spiritual um, thing. I've talked about some wonderful events that took place, and I'll probably do one more before we hit Easter Sunday uh, of, of more of that aspect. But this jumped out at me, that Christ, right before his, his being taken to, to be judged with both Caiaphas we find out Herod had his say, and and then um, um, ah, forget his name. Anyway, the Roman um, washed his hands. Oh, come on! Are you kidding me? Anyway, he um, he's judged by by these three. Everybody but but Caiaphas and his group want to let him go. Um, but Pilate, sorry, Pilate, um, everybody wants to let him go, um, and sees no fault in him except for those wicked priests. Now, here's another interesting thing that we find. When Christ is getting crucified, there's, there's one gospel that says, forgive them for they know not what they do. And we hear that over and over and over again, that we should forgive everybody. They don't know what they're doing, blah, 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 blah. Now, if you read that carefully, he's talking to, he's not talking to Caiaphas and, and the scribes and the Pharisees and all those guys. He's not talking about them. He's talking specifically about Roman soldiers. And he might be specifically talking about those that were doing the duty of crucifying him by assignment. And there was one, one centurion who said, after the crucifixion was done, he got, one, in one account, he said, he is the son of God. And the, other, and, and the other account said, he was a righteous man. He was a righteous man. And we forget that. That's who Christ was talking about, in my opinion. He was talking about those specific guys that, that hadn't been taught the prophecies of the Old Testament. They didn't know. They were just doing what they were assigned to do. And that's the specific group that he was talking to, and probably just a couple of them. That, and, and he said, forgive them, Heavenly Father, for they don't know what they're doing but I can tell they recognize that that what they're doing isn't isn't right, and that I'm that that I am who I am. And it's so fascinating that it's recorded twice that one of those one of those centurion, centurions specifically in one account says he is a righteous man, and the other one says he is the son of God. Wow. So, so when we think in a broader sense, oh, forgive them for they know not what they do. I've heard that quoted so many times, like we're just supposed to excuse evil behavior and this and that. When people have known who Jesus Christ is, let me tell you, you, you need, if, if, if that's a question to you, uh, read Mosiah 3, the whole chapter, Mosiah 3, and see who, who has a chance and who doesn't. See, see who's been taught about Jesus Christ and, and see if, if that's all just to be um, people that reject Christ and if, if there's just a blanket, forgive them. 
They don't know what they're doing. They don't have a full knowledge of everything. Well, read, read Messiah 3 and see if that doesn't help you a little bit. Okay, so that's it for today. I know um, this might not be everyone's cup of tea, but I warned those that don't want to hear about owning a sword right from the mouth of Jesus to sell your garment and go buy one. Now, you might have a different interpretation. Boy, I welcome it. I, I welcome those that had different interpretation on studying the art. I, I totally disagree with a lot of them. <laughs> and I didn't leave a comment or did, didn't get into it, to an argument, but there were everything from, hey, he, he did what he was supposed to do and he gave up his life for doing a righteous thing by studying the ark to that studying the ark has nothing to do with um, getting involved in things that we have no keys or authority for. That, that's not what that has to do with. So, you know, that, th that's great. That's what this forum is. I try to leave up everything. I, I'm, I'll be totally honest. I don't always leave up everything because some things are just too, uh, I don't know. I just don't feel good about leaving them up and so I delete them. But very, very few do I do that with. Um, mostly I just leave it up and let people read it and see what they, see what they say. Um, but, but if you check out the scriptural reference for studying the ark, the, the, the actual story, I think it's in 2 Samuel, and, and then um, was it DNC 85, I think, where Joseph Smith, it's pretty hard to, to say that wasn't a bad thing that he did in, in trying to study the ark. And there's a lot of other things that could have been, you know, maybe he shouldn't have had it in a cart, and maybe he shouldn't have done this or that. That's fine. But whatever it was, he... he he got fried by God for, for doing what he did. So anyway, that's it. Love y'all. You guys are awesome. Um, Passover week. There's so much to study and learn. Thank you for, for your input on the uh, Ark of the Covenant. Incidentally, I, I, had seen, I had seen virtually every, if not every reference to where the Ark could be. I had already watched all those. So we're all on the same, you know, wavelength and they're all fascinating. They're all interesting. We have, we have things, there's even like an, an inscription in the Grand Canyon of the Ark. And so some say, gosh, the Knights Templar, they probably brought the Ark and it's in the Grand Canyon. I mean, there's so many awesome little cool stories about where, where it could be. Uh, definitely that one is, is fascinating. I watched that a year or so ago about being underneath Golgotha and, and, uh, um, you know, it's, it's pretty compelling and it's, it's a fascinating, uh, video. Um, and, and you guys can look at the comments and s see the reference of, of that one. I'm not going to put it up. Um, there's, there's just some really fascinating ones about the ark. And, and it's interesting, it's fascinating. Um, it definitely had power and, and it was the connection that the people had with God at that time. So um, anyway, God bless. We will continue on with this uh, great um, opportunity of studying God's holy word and filling his spirit. Looking forward to conference, looking forward to conference. Um, my prediction on conference is that we are not going to hear anything of, of uh, earth shattering. It's going to be what we could study and learn by our own studies in the scripture. That's, that's just my personal feeling. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Maybe, maybe it could be earth shattering. I hope it is. <laughs> um, but I'm going to be attentive and listening and anxious just like all of you are. I love you and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.